And uh, this will probably not come up on an exam or a problem set, but I think it's a really cool idea that I wanted to introduce to you anyway. So obviously you could still read in the notes that for a more thorough discussion, but we'll go through quickly kind of this idea of um, time temperature equivalence. So we know that for viscoelastic polymers, there's this you know equivalence of time and temperature theoretically. Um, so it can behave glassy or rubbery, changing their temperature, time, strain rate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we could uh, basically establish this kind of time temperature superposition. Uh, by changing either the time scales or the temperature of an experiment. Um, so it'll allow you to kind of create this kind of master curve, and you could run one experiment, and then if you want to see how that polymer is going to behave at a different time or temperature, you could basically superpose um, uh, these uh, kind of curves. So it's going to be really cool. So um, theoretically, this hasn't, um, we don't have kind of this fundamental expression, but there is an experimentally or empirically derived equation, uh, which is the WLF equation, very famous equation in polymers. So you could superpo uh, superpose curves by keeping one curve fixed and shifting all the others by different amounts on this horizontally parallel uh, to this like logarithmic axis. So let's kind of consider this first idea. We take this reference temperature. Uh, so here's our next page. Um, at some point, you know, TS. That's our reference uh, temperature. Or excuse me, um, this uh, exactly this reference temperature here. Let's go back. Take a reference temperature. Uh, at some point, T some uh, or reference temperature point TFs, and we have uh, a temperature or a time point here, and our tau sub s, which is a little cycle here. So, date time point, and we fix one curve. So that's my red curve at one temperature T sub s. That is my kind of point uh, on my time T the little T sub s, uh, tau sub s. So we fix this one red curve. So we need to figure out. What is the new tau for a new curve with the same compliance, i.e. Young's modulus, as a reference curve at T sub s? And so we're just going to shift by this amount. And we're going to find this shift factor log of alpha t, which is just this. And again, you can see here, excuse me, this time, strain rate, uh, and temperature equivalence. Same idea here. So with the uh, williams landau ferry we're going to, basically there's an empirical equation and fit uh, for these polymer curves. So this shift factor is related to, again, shift factor here, the reference temperature to some new temperature, and C1 and C2 are these empirical fitting constants, this value and this value, um, if you choose that T sub S is equal to T sub G. So you can re-derive uh, this uh, based on free volume. Um, again, uh, basically the same kind of idea for the glass transition temperature. Um, it is way beyond the scope of this class, <laughs> but if you're interested, you can read uh, the result in this book, and your resulting equation, more generally, will be this. So, again, where it's based on, again, a fractional free volume, these are the kind of typical values for polymers, uh, same thing here, but again, we have this fitting constant. So, you can shift your curve, and again, you know, for a new temperature or kind of some new time, uh, you can shift... Uh, you essentially are able to shift and you know kind of superpose these curves and see how you know again a material for the same compile, uh, compliance how it behaves at a different temperature or time. So it's, again, it's just the superposition idea. Now, why don't I go through this amazing equation and we, why don't we utilize this more um, in practical engineering? Well, there's some limitations. So this equation is only applicable to homogeneous linear viscoelastic materials that are isotropic and amorphous. So that's a limitation. Uh, but the bigger limitation is that they have to be in this temperature range of Tg, um, basically from Tg to Tg plus 100 degrees C. So we have to be in this range of Tg all the way to Tg plus 100 degrees C. Anywhere outside of this bounds, VLF will not work. But it's still a fun theory, really cool to know. And again, it's the same idea of this time temperature superposition. So hope you enjoyed that little supplemental lecture. And next time, we are going to get into our composites lecture. So that'll be fun. And then we'll wrap up with yielding. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.